Prayer is a vital component of faith. Mark chapter 11. Whatever things you desire for, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Verse 23 talks about believing in your heart and not doubting, speaking to your mountains, and you will have whatever you say. And in the same breath, Jesus is saying, whatever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them. That means you must connect a vital, strong prayer life to a life of faith. Faith is not just believing and having confidence in your heart. It begins there. But that confidence and trust translates into a living prayer life, into a fiery prayer life into a zealous prayer life because your prayer life is a symptom is a sign that you believe in God all men of faith will be people of prayer now turn to James chapter 5 verse 13 is anyone suffering and the answer is pray is there anyone among you suffering the instruction from God is if you are suffering if you are in pain if you are going through some difficulty the first response from you is not to cry even though you may cry in the prayer that's fine the first response should be prayer because it is through prayer that we process the difficulty the pain the depression the stress that we're going through in our life it's processed through prayer prayer is a factory that turns weakness into strength prayer is the factory that turns mourning into dancing you have to go through that process the dancing will not just come suddenly like a magic the strength will not just come falling upon you. It's the process of prayer that translates that weakness into strength. So prayer is one of the keys of the kingdom. Let me give you five main purposes of prayer. The first is this, for growth and transformation. Luke chapter 9 verse 29. The Bible says that as Jesus prayed, the appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glistening. When Jesus prayed, he began to evolve. Now that's a description of what happened on the Mount of Transfiguration, but it's also a great metaphor for what happens when we pray. Because when we pray, we evolve. When we pray, we become. The weak become strong. Prayer is the place of spiritual exchange. You come into prayer depressed, but as you pray, you're filled with joy. Prayer is a place where you evolve. Prayer is the place where you transform. And that's why prayer is essential for discipleship because in that process of prayer is how God transforms us on the inside. Prayer is the place where you turn from struggling with sins into sanctification. Number two, Colossians chapter 4 verse 12. Epaphras, who is one of you, a bond servant of Christ, greets you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. This man was praying for the believers at the church in Colossae. And this was the point of his prayer for every person in that church. Father, I'm praying for them that every one of them will stand perfect and complete in the will of God. He wasn't praying for them to get a new pair of jeans, a new pair of shoes, and he wasn't praying for them to go on a holiday to enjoy their life. He was praying that they would discover the will of God and they would do the will of God and they will be fulfilled in the will of God. Can you say amen? When Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, that's what he prayed. Not my will, Lord, but your will be done. We make a mistake when we use prayer only for asking things from God. When we decide whatever we want to do and we say, Lord, bless me. Instead of first asking His will. Because if it is His will, it is already blessed. If you follow God's plan, God's vision, God's will, you don't have to ask God to bless it because what is God's will is already blessed. So prayer is the place where we seek the will of God. Can you say amen? Number three, the purpose of prayer is in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, to make petitions and to pray for needs. There's nothing wrong in praying for needs. There's nothing wrong in asking God to bless you according to His word. And we use prayer for that. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Your requests, let it be made known to God, not to people, to God. So prayer is the place where you seek your needs to be met in petitions. And it says, with thanksgiving. So add thanksgiving to your prayer. Hallelujah. Number four, 
Prayer is for the purpose of bringing the will of God on the earth, which is different from God's will for your life. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So prayer is the means by which we bring God's will which exists in heaven upon the earth. There's God's will for Nagaland. There's God's will for India. There is a will of God for the earth right now. So our purpose as prayer people and as disciples of Jesus is to pray so that His will is established on the earth. And for that, there are times you need to make declarations and decrees. You need to give commands in the realm of the Spirit. It says in Job 22 verse 28, that thou shalt decree a thing. And it will be established for you. The word declare actually means decree. A decree is a command. Thou shalt decree a thing. It's not God who decrees. It's me who decree. But I can decree when I know it is God's will. I cannot just make any declaration. I have to go into the Word. I have to understand the will of God. I have to be hooked up to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit puts a verse, puts a declaration in my heart, which is according to His Word. And that is what I decree. So that what I decree is what God has already decreed in heaven. If you bind on earth, God will bind on heaven, the Bible says. But that verse literally means whatever you see first is bound in heaven, you decree on the earth and it will be bound on the earth. So prayer is for the purpose of decreeing the purposes of God on the earth. The fifth purpose of prayer is this, for warfare and intercession. James chapter 4 verse 7, submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So in prayer is how we warfare. In prayer is how we resist Satan. In prayer is how we destroy the works of the thief, the destroyer. So prayer is a place for warfare and intercession. Where you use the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Where you establish the victory of Christ of your region. Now, let's talk about the right way to pray. Because the Bible says you can pray in a wrong way. You can pray in a wrong way when you're praying selfishly. So there's a wrong way to pray and a right way to pray. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Number one, how do I pray? You pray to the Father, our Father in heaven. Jesus said, pray to the Father, our Father in heaven. So prayer is always directed to God the Father, but we pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus said in John, pray in my name. Whatever you ask in my name, I will give it to you. Amen. John 14, 13. So pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. Don't pray to any image, whether it's of a saint, whether even it's of Mary. You don't pray to that. You pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. Can you say Amen? Number three, pray in faith. The faith that God hears. God looks at the heart. Man looks on the outside. So faith in your heart. Pray with simple faith in your heart. That's it. The next is this. Pray in the right way. Pray in boldness. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Don't pray with timidity. Don't pray with inferiority complex. Because the Bible says that it is through boldness we must pray. Remember, in Luke chapter 11, the disciples of Jesus came to him and said, teach us how to pray. So Jesus taught them how to pray and he gave them two illustrations. One illustration is of a friend who goes in the middle of the night to his friend's house, bangs on the door, hey, in the middle of the night. And his friend said, don't disturb me. But he kept on banging and banging and banging till the friend opened the door and he ate. So Jesus there gives this important lesson. He says, because of his impudence, that's the real word, impudence because of his impudence the friend opened the door the word impudence in the greek means because of his shamelessness the word shamelessness means boldness not that you are shameless no shamelessness means boldness shamelessness means when you pray don't carry shame in your heart don't carry guilt in your heart don't carry inferiority complex in your heart don't say i'm only a worm i'm worse than a thousand worms don't say those things you come boldly to the throne of grace because you are washed in the blood you are a child of god you are accepted you are forgiven of your sins Amen. That is the way to pray. Next, pray conscious of the spirit realm. This is very important. When you're praying, connect to the spirit realm. How do I connect the spirit realm? It's not by your body. It's not by your head. It's by your heart. Heart. The heart is the organ that is in the natural and also in the spiritual. I'm not talking about your physical heart. I'm talking about your spirit man. Can you say amen? How do I connect to the spirit realm? Very simple. When we pray, Jesus said, Pray this manner, our Father, okay, our Father where? Our Father in heaven. Immediately, you have to connect to a realm that you don't see. 
Immediately, you have to be conscious of the spirit realm that you have never seen with your naked eyes. Pray conscious, not of yourself, but of the spirit realm. The next way you pray is this. Partner with the realm of the spirit. Listen to the Holy Spirit as you are praying. Yield to the Holy Spirit. Don't just pray whatever you want to pray. Don't just pray long prayers and just repeat the prayers again. God doesn't listen to you because you pray long prayers. God doesn't listen to you because you repeat your prayers. When you are praying, listen to the Holy Spirit in your heart. Listen. Yield to the Spirit. And whatever He impresses upon you, whispers in your heart, a thought, a word, an impression, a direction, listen to that. Obey that. When you pray, learn to listen. Listening is as important as speaking. Sometimes listening is more important than speaking because prayer is not just one-way dialogue. It's a two-way dialogue. I talk, He speaks. I listen, He speaks. I respond, I pray. It's a two-way dialogue. And the power of prayer you will experience when you have listened and obeyed that instruction is where the potential of the power of prayer is experienced. Hello, dear viewers. My name is Sean Kikong, and I'm the senior pastor of Faith Harvest Church here in the city of Kohima, the state of Nagaland, and in the blessed country of India. And it is our pleasure and privilege to bring the good news, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to you from the mountains of Nagaland. We believe that as a people, the Nagas, we are called and destined by God to be preachers, teachers, proclaimers of the good news of salvation to all the nations of the world. Because in the same way that our society was transformed from headhunters to a vibrant Christian community today, we believe we are called to proclaim that same message that brought the power of Jesus Christ into our community. And that's the reason why we have the mountain voice coming to you from the hills of Nagaland. If you are a regular watcher of our mountain voice episodes, would you kindly consider doing two things for us today? Number one, if you have a testimony, if you have been blessed in any way, would you kindly write to us on our email ID or even send a text on the numbers that are displayed on the screen? We would love to hear from you and understand, assess and see how this channel has been impacting people all across this country and even in the other nations. And my second request is this. Would you kindly consider becoming a partner with The Mountain Voice for the proclamation of the gospel through God TV? We know that the gospel must be proclaimed in all the nations of the world till every tribe, nation, people and tongue has listened to the good news of salvation. But we also know that it requires resources to proclaim the gospel. If you would consider prayerfully becoming a partner with us with any specific amount on a monthly basis, a one-time basis or even an annual basis, we would be greatly appreciative of your generosity and every seed that you sow towards the mountain boys will go towards the proclamation of the gospel. The giving details will be displayed on the screen. If you can kindly email us the screenshots or on the descriptions, add the reason why you are giving the mountain boys. We would greatly, greatly appreciate your gifts and we can work together to proclaim the good news to the nations of the world. God bless you as you continue to listen to this message. We look forward to hearing from you. Now, let's go to James chapter 5 again. Now, this next sentence is two important conditions of prayer to be answered. Number one, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The righteous man is you and me. We are righteous because of the blood of Christ. Amen. So that condition is already met by everyone. The other two conditions are important. Effective, fervent. Effective, fervent. Let's look at the word fervent. The word fervent means heartfelt. This is a condition for prayer to be answered. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The word avails means produces a lot of power, makes dynamic power available to work in your situation and circumstance. So in order to experience the power of prayer, there are three conditions. Number one, you must be righteous. Number two, it must be fervent, heartfelt. Jeremiah 29 verse 13. You shall find me when you search for me, when you seek for me with all your heart. Passionate prayer, heartfelt prayer 
God responds to that. Look at 2 Chronicles chapter 15, 12 and 15. Then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. They entered into a commitment to seek God with all their heart and soul. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with all their soul. And he was found by them, and the Lord gave them rest all around. Oh, when you seek the will of God and you know, rest will come. Otherwise, you'll be confused your whole life. If you know the will of God, you don't have to compete with anyone in the world. But if you don't know, you'll compete with your friends. You'll compete with your cousins. Compete with your neighbors. Compete with the other tribe. If you know the will of God, there is no competition in the will of God. Now, the third word is this. Effective. Everyone say effective. Effective means the efficient use of time and resources. God is saying here that prayer must be effective. That means there is some prayer that's not effective. Some prayer is just talking into the air. Some prayer is just wasting time. How can I make prayer effective? You see, the Bible doesn't say it has to be sincere prayers. Yes, sincerity. But sincerity enough is not alone. Not humility alone. It's effective prayer. Go to Ephesians chapter 5 and let's see what effective means here. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. How do you redeem your time? You redeem your time by walking according to the will of God. So what does effective mean? Effective means knowing the will of God. Knowing the will of God. When you pray according to the will of God, that's effective prayer. Not just prayer. Not just a lot of emotions. Not even a lot of tears. But according to the will of God. The degree to which the will of God is in that prayer, that prayer is effectual. That prayer is effective. The will of God. You must know the will of God when you pray. See, the kingdom of God is held together by the will of God. Because it's a kingdom of a king. The kingdom functions by the will of the king. That means prayer is for the purpose of establishing the will of God. Not your will. Not your selfishness. The anointing and the gifts are given to us to establish His will, not our will. The resources God gives us are to establish His will, not our will. Can you say amen? So prayer is effective when it is directed to the will of God, when it comes from the will of God. So let me give you two things. How do I pray the will of God? Number one, you pray the Word of God. You pray the Scriptures. You get the Scriptures that talk about healing. You get the scriptures that talk about finances. You get the scriptures that talk about your children. You get the scriptures that talk about marriage. So if you're praying for marriage, get the Bible verses about marriage and you pray that. You're praying for your children, get the Bible verses about prayer and say, all my children shall be taught by the Lord. My children are like olive plants in the house of the Lord. You pray the word of God over that situation. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So you must get the verses. Why? Because the verses are the will of God. So you must take the Bible verses and you must pray that. Because that is a surety you are praying the will of God. Ephesians chapter 1 and Colossians chapter 1, you will find prayers that are according to the will of God. Ephesians chapter 1 Verse 16, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. And this is the way Paul prayed for them. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. This is how you pray for your life. Father, I pray that you will give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Hallelujah. This is the way the apostle prayed for the believers in that church. Look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. This is a prayer point Paul prays. And to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. It seems that Paul, after people are born again, filled with the Spirit, the most important prayer for their life is the will of God. The most important prayer is the will of God, that you would know the will of God in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We don't pray that. Pastor, please pray for me that my boyfriend will not leave me. How many people have requested that prayer for me? I don't pray those prayers because in some cases, it's God's will for your boyfriend to leave you. Look at verse 10. That you may walk worthy of the Lord. Ah, Paul is praying that these people would walk worthy of the Lord. That is 
Bible prayer. That is praying the word. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, for all patience and long-suffering with joy. That is how Paul prayed. It's in the Bible. So that's what we call praying the word of God. Take this Bible prayers and pray it for your life. You're praying according to the will of God. Amen. Number two, how do I pray according to the will of God? Look at Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. This is not referring to physical weakness. It's referring to the weakness that you do not have all knowledge. You do not have all understanding. You don't know what you should be doing to serve the Lord, but God knows. So the Holy Spirit helps us in our infirmities. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself, everyone say Himself. The Holy Spirit Himself comes and makes intercession for us with groanings. That means when you pray in tongues, when you are deep groaning from within in that place of prayer, the Holy Spirit is helping you. And when you yield to that, the Holy Spirit intercedes for you. The Holy Spirit is praying for you. That's how you pray the will of God. You know why? Look at verse 27. Now He who searches the hearts, the Holy Spirit, knows what the mind of the Spirit is because He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. That is praying the will of God. How? By yielding to the Holy Spirit, by praying in tongues. Praying in tongues is not of the devil. Tongues is from the Bible. It's not from a denomination. So when you pray in tongues, when you pray in tongues, the Bible says you are praying the will of God. The Holy Spirit comes and helps you to pray the will of God. The Holy Spirit will search your heart. As you're praying in tongues, the Holy Spirit will work in your heart. And what is in the mind of God, the Holy Spirit will whisper in your heart. So what is in the mind of God? My thoughts are not your thoughts, right? Isaiah 55, my thoughts are not your thoughts. So God has thoughts, you have thoughts. When you're praying in tongues, the Holy Spirit takes from the thought of God and it brings it into you. So that you will know because that's what First Corinthians tells us, First Corinthians chapter 2, as it is written, verse 9, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. God has prepared. God has prepared. God has a book for you in heaven. Hallelujah. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So the Holy Spirit goes into the library of heaven and He looks for your book. He looks for 2024. He opens up to the right chapter for the month of April and the Holy Spirit searches the mind of God, hallelujah, and it brings it to you. Look at verse 11. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might receive or know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Why did the Holy Spirit come and live inside you? One of the reasons is this, so that you may know the things of God. So that you may be able to be conscious about God, walk with God, have a relationship with God, pray to God. So that you may know the things that God has given to you. The Holy Spirit came inside you to be your lecturer. The lecturer for life is the Holy Spirit. The lecturer for your life is the Holy Spirit. And God sent Him to live in you, not just to occupy this space. That He would reveal to you. And that's why you need to pray in tongues. That you will know the mind of God for your life. Pray and pray as long as it takes. Six months, keep on praying. Two weeks, keep on praying. 21 days, see, you need to pray till you know. The whole amount of praying, if you just pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray, your friends are getting jobs, your friends are going to Delhi, Mumbai, they're traveling in Bangkok, doesn't matter. You just pray and pray and pray and pray and you get the will of God. I tell you, the moment you get the will of God and you obey Him, you will shoof and your friends traveling all around you, they tell you, in five years' time, they'll still be in the same place, you'll be ahead. So don't be worried about one month not doing anything but just praying. Just pray. Just seek the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Come, let's pray. Come on, say this with me. Father God, I believe you have a purpose and a destiny for my life. You have a will for me that you want me to follow. And Father, I pray that you will give me the grace to seek you with all my heart so that I would know the things that you have prepared for me. So Father, I pray that you will give me the knowledge of your will in all spiritual wisdom 
and understanding so that I may walk worthy of you, fully pleasing you, being fruitful in every good work and being established and perfected in all the will of God for my life. And I ask Lord God for the courage, the grace and the strength to walk in a new way, in a new life. And I believe that my life will blossom as the rose. My life will have abundance of blossoming. My life will be like the highway in the wilderness, a highway of wisdom, a highway of anointing, a highway of breakthroughs. Father, I pray rivers in the desert of my life. And Father, I pray that I'm in that new level, Lord. Next level, Lord God. I believe it. I receive it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. We just had such a powerful, powerful worship service. The presence of God was so thick. They were so hungry for the Word of God. The worship was amazing. But above all, the Holy Spirit came and showed up in the end. So many people received ministry for healing, deliverance, and salvation. I want to encourage you when you're watching this, would you kindly implement, practice whatever was instructed in this sermon? Blessed are those who not only hear, but who are doers of the Word of God, who are practicers of the Word of God. So I strongly encourage my church and I encourage you, do the Word, and that's where you will see the power of God transform your life. And would you also please do me this favor? Would you follow us on our socials? Send us an email about a testimony, a blessing that you have received through this channel. We would love to keep in touch with you, all right? God bless you all, and we'll see you next time. School of the Supernatural Ministry invites all the pastors, leaders, and hungry believers. Learn how to function in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, minister healing to the sick, and much more. Scan the QR code to register starting from the 1st of November to the 22nd of November, 2024. Sign up today. Connect with us on our YouTube channel, Faith Harvest Church TV. Keep up to date with our latest contents by subscribing to the channel.